Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks again for joining us. Hope y'all doing good. Hope y'all having a wonderful day. Feel free to comment. Consider subscribing. like and share and uh, have a wonderful day hope you like the video and uh, stick around for sweet Bailey's tip of the day hey 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 welcome back to sweet Bailey YouTube Thanks again for joining us. Hope you're all doing good. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. And uh, we have a huge problem here in the garage. We got a bunch of stuff all over the floor. Leaf blower, hedge trimmer, pole saw, weed eaters, um, various hand tools. Um, and we need to get that stuff, stuff up and out of the way. So that's where this corner comes into play. We have the big door on the garage here and then this little wall, which is perfect for this project, off to the side. And this is where this wood comes in here. I have gotten some two by sixes and two by fours and I have pre-cut them with a hacksaw. Yes, I do not have a skill saw. Um, and actually it was a bit more precise of a cut to do it with a hacksaw um so i have kind of notched these so the two by fours will go halfway into the two by sixes these are just a little bit loose but uh pretty close and we have wedged the two by sixes in between this wood here for the garage door and the corner of the garage so this is where it's going to stay and i like the old-fashioned wood style look of things so that is why i've decided to go with this design here um and you might think that yeah it's not really practical to have the two by sixes upright like that because they pretty much do nothing and you could have just mounted this side the two by fours that go horizontally but you know what that would look a little more cheesy and it wouldn't really look as good or you know whatever so i did this just because this is the way i want to do it maybe it's a little bit of a waste of wood but i think it looks better it's more uh a better of a design for for looks um i actually think that maybe i could probably put another two by four in down lower for smaller smaller hand tools such as loppers um things that are shorter like the pitchfork would fit down there too um so anyways i have pre-marked these i put some some x's on there and I need to drill those out so I can mount these to the bricks. And that's where we need to go over here and put some new tools to use. Because if you see this, that's the problem right there, having to maneuver through stuff like that. So we need to get it out of the way up on the wall and what have what have you so we have these these are anchors 
to mount things onto concrete or bricks. Um, so there's a, a stud type of deal there with a cone deal on the end and a nut and a washer there. So when you tighten the nut, it'll pull the cone thing into the sleeve here that will spread and it'll wedge itself into the concrete so it'll stay firmly and be a strong hold. So it's the all sleeve sleeve anchor. They're half inch. Um, the diameter of the round part is half inch. So that's how big of a hole you need to drill. And then I believe the way that they measure these is from the inside of the washer to the end of the sleeve, which would be about three and a half, three and three quarters. Um, and that'll be perfect to go by the two, through the two by four and into the brick, all the way through the brick. So then um, when it wedges, it'll be on the inside of the hollow part of the brick a little bit, so it won't be able to pull back through. Um, <clears throat> so I got this box of these. Uh, I forget how many of them is in there, but I think it was like 20, 24 or something. I got this off of Amazon probably, honestly, a couple months ago. Um... And then you also need masonry drill bits to drill into the concrete or bricks, and which are these here. So I have also bought those off of Amazon, and we will be using the half inch bit. Um, and yeah, so. When some people use these drill bits and they did some ratings or reviews on Amazon after they purchased these and used these, they explain how they had a problem with the tip of it getting hot and literally exploding. Well, this is where human error comes into play because 50 or 90% of the time that you review a product on Amazon and it has a negative or bad review on it. Most of the time, the reason that the review is bad or negative is because the person that purchased the product had a bad experience with the product and or improperly used the tool. Like it says right here, when drilling, you must use water cooling to prevent burning at high temperature and cannot be applied to impact function. So yes, the tip will get hot because you're drilling in concrete or bricks. So you have to apply water to cool the bit. So that's why I don't really believe those reviews because those people didn't apply the proper water to the hole while drilling them to cool the bit. And that's why their bits exploded and they had bad experience. It has nothing to do with the bit. And then I also have these to pre-drill the wood so the washer portion and nut will fit into the wood and not be sticking out of it. So I think it's the inch and the eighth one I will be using. And um, I'll be pre-drilling the wood with a regular drill bit. And then I'll be using these to sink it in a little ways so that the washer and the nut of the uh, anchor is set into the 2x4 and it will not stick out past the surface. Um, so I'm going to stop the video here and then 
we shall do that and continue. Okay, we're back here and we have pre-drilled all of the holes with the regular drill bit um, in each board here. Let's see where... Yeah, you can see the floor right there. Um, so yeah, pre-drilled those. And I believe it is the inch and a quarter one I will need because the width of the washer so that it'll clear there. So now I'm going to drill those with this and sink them in um, about that far so that the the head of the bolt and washer are below the surface of the wood. Yeah. And sorry I don't have a GoPro. Uh, I want to get a couple one day, probably mount one on my hat because I'm always wearing a hat. And then I could record while I'm working. But there's a lot of jobs that I can't hold my phone and, you know work efficiently so I just have to stop the video and then continue later so just hold on your horses and we'll be right back but there is one thing you usually want to do when you're doing a project like this and a reason why you would want to save little pieces of wood so say you're doing a project like this and you need to uh, do some precise, precise work. You need to use a smaller piece of wood for practice to make sure that you're drilling the right size hole. See that is just a little bit bigger than needed. Um, I don't know if the, see that's the inch and a quarter and the other one's inch and an eighth. I don't know if the inch and the eighth one would be big enough. Um, so this is why you want to use a test piece. Now I can't get that washer out of there. Um, so yeah, and then just use gravity to work for you. So, wow, look at that gravity, thanks. So I think I'm going to pre-drill another one, and we'll try the inch and an eighth, and see if that's better. Alright, back again. So this one is inch and a quarter. This one's inch and an eighth. So let's see if this will... That washer fits in there. Almost perfect. So if we waller it just a tiny little bit then uh, we can we can make them beautiful so it'd be nice snug fit so it's a good thing we use this test piece before we did it into the actual pieces we're going to use um, so yeah I'm gonna stop the video again and then we're going to use the inch and an eighth instead and then as well you have to drill a half inch hole so that you can test fit the whole product in it and make sure it fits perfectly. So doing this project, we need multiple kinds of drill bits, multiple sizes. So I'm using this one for the pilot hole, which will be the 3 16 regular drill bit. And then we do the inch and the eighth um, I forget what these ones called, but, um, yeah. And then we're using the half inch to get the center big enough that the whole unit will fit down in there nice and snug. Alright, so this is what the finished pro product will look like. Um, 
And when we tighten it down there, it'll it'll sink in and smush the wood a little bit. So that should be about perfect. The washer fits in there nice and tight. There's no excess room around it. And we have plenty of room on the bottom to go through the brick and squish the uh, the brick to hold it in place. So I'm gonna pre-drill all the rest of these. Um, except for when we, after we do this, we also still have to drill the holes into the bricks. So after all these are pre-drilled, ready to go, then we have to place them up how they're gonna be. And then we'll have to start each hole with the masonry bit to mark it where it needs drilled, then remove all the wood and drill them all and make sure that we water the the bit properly so it stays cool so it's a, a fairly complex process so uh i'm gonna stop the video right here and then we shall continue later when i have more progress for you all right we're back again and we have all of the holes pre-drilled ready for action um so now we need to use a masonry bit this would be the quarter inch and we'll just do just a tiny bit to start just to make an indent into the brick to show us where the hole will be in each of the holes and then we will remove all the boards and then drill all the way through um, and get up to a half an inch hole so we can install all of those anchors so we're making progress slowly but surely all right back again here and when you're doing this project this is a very important tool Spray bottle with water. It's very simple. So I had got all the holes started into the bricks with the masonry bits. And I just did a little a little starter hole just to um just to see where where it's gonna be so then I can drill it bigger and all the way through uh, later. And it's not that difficult to, well, I can't do it while I'm holding my phone and recording, but you have your drill in one hand with your masonry bit, and then in the other hand, you have your spray bottle. And then every, you know, maybe two seconds, just spray it a little bit so there's water on the bit, on the hole, so then it'll oh man look at that that's a big one yeah um so yeah we got all the boards prepped and ready pre-drilled we do need to drill these holes bigger to half inch um but we have the holes in the bricks marked and started and we also need to drill those to half inch and also when you're drilling these you want to be very careful because when you get through to the last little portion and you're about to break through the the bricks you don't want to force it at all you want it to just easily drill through and go all the way through smoothly you don't want to force it because it'll it'll break off the back portion of the brick and it won't really um hold is good so yeah so i'm gonna stop the video again here we're going to pre-drill the boards half inch and then finish drilling the bricks um half inch i think maybe we'll do 
we'll go all the way through with the the quarter inch bit first and then we will do it again with the half inch bit so that it's not overbearing um, either one of the bits or um, so it's just easier for the tool to do the job so I'm gonna stop again here and then we shall continue once I have those holes done and then we can start installing the anchors. All right, we are back once again and we have got two holes drilled out. Oh man, it's quite the process to do this. Um, so I use a quarter inch masonry bit and then I use the half inch, half inch masonry bit. And then I switched to the half inch regular bit. And we have one installed. I test fitted it in there and actually got it stuck in there and cannot get it back out because it's not supposed to come back up. And then I got the second hole just drilled out there and it's a long tedious process um it's not really that hard to do this except for the aspect of um spraying water in in the hole on your bit and such um but The main thing that I've noticed is that you just need a fair amount of patience, really. That's about it. Um, so, it's going to be a long time before I get eight more holes drilled because just these two holes right there took me probably easily a half hour, if not longer. So it's a long, slow process, but if you have some patience, you'll be fine. Um, let me grab one of these rags here. I can't really record uh, a whole lot of the process just be besides step by step um here and there stuff because it just takes so long i'm we'll just kind of clean up some of this some of that concrete gets really really messy in there and uh, it doesn't really matter it's going to be behind behind the board, but, uh, good night, sucker. In my house, we don't play with spiders. Okay, I don't know where he went, but he's, okay, that's him right there. I don't like spiders. Um, I don't want spiders on me, and I don't want spiders around me um so we're making quite the mess here because you have to water this stuff pretty good i've went through probably a half a bottle of water just on these two holes just to make sure the bits don't get too hot and uh get damaged in any way so uh, I did notice on this smaller bit, it was getting a little tiny bit of coloration on the tip of it, but nothing bad. Um, so, it's quite the process. I think I'm going to, I'm probably going to have to move all these tools and then probably get the, the garden hose in here and just spray this stuff out with the hose. 
Um, but I have eight more holes to drill. That will probably be four hours of doing what I've been doing. And it's been working good. Um, so the first one I put in, I kind of messed up the the washer and stuff because I was trying to get it back out of there. But um, that's fine because I'm only using, I would say, what, 10 of these? So the way that I'm doing this now, that I've learned a little bit about it, I've never, never done this before. So we'll stick that part into the hole. Um, we need to figure out the exact thickness of the the board, how much of it that we are going to need to poke through the wall precisely because I want the end of the stud to be flush with the boards and no further out and hopefully not really any further in either so it's fairly precise uh, so let's get our measuring tape here real quick I did have to wood rasp um, I don't know where I put it but I wood rasped this board because I did get a sliver from it earlier and uh, was bleeding a little bit because it is quite rough in a few spots I do not mind the roughness of it but I don't want it to hurt me so inch and a half and the hole the hole goes in I would guesstimate and say it looks like a half inch I would say maybe I can I can measure the um, one of these like this so the washer and the nut will be just short of a half inch so we want Oh, there's a squirrel. Hey, squirrel. He's going to go on the fence over here. There he goes. What's up, squirrel? See you later. Have a nice day. Um, they use the fences as transportation around here, and they love that pine tree. Anyways, back to reality. Um, so we want... Let's see how much this one's sticking out. This one is sticking out about inch and a quarter almost. So that means that the the end of the nut will be an inch and a quarter. So that might be a little bit of an issue because that one is stuck in there. When I first put this one in there, I put the whole thing in there like this. Tapped it in with the rubber hammer because it was quite tight. And I kind of figured out that you don't want to do that. So now I know that you want the studs to stick out. Let's see, where are we at? We want that to stick out about an inch and a half. So I can actually pull this one out a little bit to get it at the, the depth that we want. Um, and then it'll just grab on to where it is there. So that's an inch and a half there. So that'll be good. Um, and then we can slide this in there on, the, on there. Make sure it's the right way like that. And it's not so easy. You do kind of have to get at least this piece kind of towards the end because once it's in there it doesn't like to come back out and then you have the spacer part so then let's see I guess I guess technically we kind of do need to okay drop the nut there 
Bear with me here just a second. We've never done this before, so we're still figuring out the best uh, best way to do this. So obviously just guessing, we can drop the nut again. All right, give me just a second here. So like I was saying, obviously if we're doing this the first time and guessing the best procedure, <laughs> trial and error, um, we're not gonna get it right the first time. First uh, bolt, at least. So we don't want that necessarily tight yet. And we want the hole to be fairly tight. And we want that to be a little bit loose so it doesn't make that the little thing at the end uh, expand. So then we just kind of tap this in there. And it's good that it's very snug um, because that'll just mean it'll grab even better. And we only want to go in so the end of the bolt is exactly about an inch and a half from the wall. And I think that's about exactly where we are because the nut is not tightened all the way. So if we kind of loosely snug that up there, I think we're, we're looking good. So it'll be an inch and a half there and that'll be about perfect. So it'll be in inset just a tiny bit. And then when you are putting the board, let me try to get some of this out of there. And then I'm just gonna do this one one board to, to show you. And then I'm pretty much gonna do the rest of the project off screen until I'm pretty much completely done with this portion of the project and then um, and then we'll continue from there. <clears throat> so we'll get the board up here. And we're just kind of looking here to see. Okay, let's get this stuff off of there. So we got it where we want it. Okay, drop the nut for the third time. Um, we'll take all this stuff off here, set it over here, pick the nut up again, and then we should be able to kind of set this. pretty good. The board is a little bit warped. And it looks like one of my holes is a little bit off. You can't really see the bolt there, but the bolt's kind of far to the side. So I'm going to have to see if I can get that lined up. Let's look at the the measurement here from from the center of the hole. To the edge of the board is um about two and a half inches. And from the center of the, it looks like it should be c 
correct. It's just that board is a little bit warped. Let me pause here and then see if we can get this on.